Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here to the last meeting of the year for the Minnehaha County Commission. Um, and before we start uh, the pledge, I wanted to go ahead and wish Commissioner Heiberger a belated happy birthday. She had a very big birthday and <laughs> we didn't put any buzzards or anything over her chair, but we wanted to make sure that we could wish her a happy birthday. Thank so. you. All right, with that, we'll start the meeting of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, with that, we have a couple of um, special recognitions here today. Um, first of all, we have our treasurer, uh, Pam Nelson here. And Pam, if you just want to come up to the podium. So, you don't mind, I'll just wave it. Oh, oh, I didn't know I had to speak. Oh, well, I'll give you an opportunity. Um, so, this is uh, Treasurer uh, Pam Nelson's last official meeting with us. She's always welcome to come back anytime she wants to. Um, but we have, as a, just on behalf of all the citizens of South Dakota, we have a big debt uh, to pay to Pam. She has been in service since before I got out of high school, which was just a day or two ago. Um, but she was first elected to office in 1979. She served in both the State House of Representatives and the State Senate. She served on the State um, PUC Commission. And uh, then she came to Minnehaha County. She served four complete terms as treasurer. She's overseen the largest collection of property taxes and vehicle licenses in the entire state of South Dakota. And um, for all of your service, we just really want to thank you. We have a well, card with a little bit of appreciation. And you're welcome to take the podium. Well, I would like to thank all of you. I've enjoyed working as a county commissioner and with all of you. I also started, um, uh, I was on the school board for nine years before any of the stuff that she mentioned. But <laughs> So uh, I've been around a while. <laughs> And hopefully I learned something. So um, thank you so much. I appreciate the recognition. It means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. And we have our auditor, Bob Litz, um, attending this morning via Zoom, I believe. Bob, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Oh, look, we can even see yeah. you now. Well, briefly, we could see you. So anyway, we also want to thank um, Auditor Litz for his years of service. He was first elected in 2010. Um, he served on the Sioux Falls City Council prior to that. And um, recently, he oversaw the largest election in Minnehaha County. There were over 93,000 votes that were tallied and carefully counted. And uh, we just want to thank you, Bob. I know you're convalescing and you're out of town right now, but uh, so couldn't be here with us in person. We do have a card for you, and we will get that to you. So thank you very much. Very good, and, and, and thank you. And I, I did want to say that uh, I'm glad I, I got to know all the commissioners that I, I've known, uh, you know, in my time in office, uh, and especially this bunch here. Uh, you, you guys uh, you pay attention to government. Sure, it was like you go it seems to be one of those things that uh, shorter supply here uh, for government. Here so I wanted to commend you for that. And uh, thank you for the recognition. Uh, and I will be back in Sioux Falls occasionally uh, for a medical appointment. And uh, I'll probably stop by. So uh, once again, thank you, commissioners, for, uh, for uh, helping me learn things in life and professionally. I, I do appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for being with us this morning. All right. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and move on to our routine business. It's just as a reminder, there are documents available for review next to Commissioner Heiberger. For anyone who needs any, if you could uh, please silence your cell phones. And those of you who are attending via Zoom, if you could please put yourself on mute until such time as you plan to be speaking, that would be amazing. That'd be great. And Carol is here this morning if anybody needs any special listening device. 
All right, that takes us routine business. First item, I'd consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Sext second item is to approve the commission meeting minutes for December 15th, 2020. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Third item are bills to be paid in the amount of $803,086.92. Pay the bills. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Madam Commissioner, Chair. Commissioner Barth. Um, I wasn't going to make any comment, but in reviewing the bills, it was a little bit of an extraordinary one. We had 17 bills for decedent transport for MedStar at $400 each. It's one of the responsibilities uh, that we have to pick up people who died without uh, supervision and take them in to be uh, to our medical examiner. But 17 is, I think, the most I've ever seen. So, and of course, we have many other bills like that that people don't really know about. But uh, thank you. That's my comment. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. I had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, there's a couple of reports there that I'd recommend for your review. Both have a lot of really good information. We've got the report from the Juvenile Detention Center and from the Mobile Crisis Team. Um, next item are personnel actions. First, I'd consider a motion to approve routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is a, spe a special commission action to approve the salary of $4,400 biweekly for Bennett Kite, County Auditor, effective January 1st, 2021. Carrie. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. This is a action to just record and document the salary for Bennett Kite for the three days um, starting January 1st through the 3rd up to the effective date of the resolution that you passed earlier this month. So this is really more of a housekeeping item. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, just for housekeeping for people who might be watching, um, you'll notice that we have a different set of start dates for the different people that we have, um, newly elected officials and uh, for Ben, and those are all di dictated by statute, and that's why uh, there's a special action with respect to um, Mr. Kite, our new auditor's salary. So we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes us to the next item, which is a special commission action to approve the hire of Bethany Jost as a paralegal with the Public Defender's Office at $27.37 per hour, effective December 30th. Carrie. You might recall that um, our salary guidelines have parameters for hiring new employees. In this case, Bethany is a rehire, and the request is simply to rehire her at the grade and step that she was at when she left earlier this year. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. <clears throat> Any questions, comments? Just goes to show the county is a better place to work <laughs> than the city. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next item is special commission action to approve a temporary reclassification of one deputy state's attorney position to a senior trial attorney and to appoint Crystal Johnson as a senior trial attorney for the state's attorney's office at $4,371.20 biweekly, effective January 4th, 2021. And this action would just put Crystal back in the same position and salary that she was at when she had left. Um, Daniel Hagar is here to explain it further if you have questions for him. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Daniel? Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes us to um, item E, which is special commission action to approve the hire of Eric Bogue as the chief civil deputy state's attorney for the state's attorney's office at $4,824.40 biweekly with a paid time off accrual of 6 hours and 6.46 uh, 6 hours biweekly effective December 30th, 2020. 
Uh, many of you might know Eric Bog. He is a very experienced individual who is, um, we're grateful that he has accepted our chief civil attorney position. Because of the extensive amount of experience that he is bringing to the position, we're requesting, requesting the salary above policy. Here, Gan Daniel is here in case you have additional questions. I would move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Commissioner Carsey, do you want to make another comment? <laughs> There's at least three of them here coming from the city to the county. So. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And that takes us to the last item, special commission action to approve um, temporarily adding one accountant position to the treasurer's office by transferring Cindy Jepson from the auditor's office effective January 4th, 2021. We are in the happy position today with all these special actions. They involve incredibly talented and experienced individuals coming to the county. This is a bit of a unique request. Cindy Jepson is related to Bennett Kite, who's the new auditor. Um, this transfer accomplishes two wonderful things. It avoids any conflict with our nepotism policy by moving her out of the auditor's, auditor's office. And it also takes advantage of her significant years of experience and knowledge of accounting and places her in another department where that would be really beneficial. So we're asking for this request to transfer her. If it's approved, this is temporary only, a temporary over hire in that department only. Any questions? It has, I should say too, that's been discussed with Chris Swanson, with Cindy, of course, herself, and Bennett Kite, and everybody supportive. Commissioner Karski. Just a few comments, I guess. You know, this has been kind of a lot of things in motion, and everybody's doing this fully involved and informed of what's happening, too. It is a unique circumstance, very unique circumstance. Um, you know, we, we hired um, Mr. Kite to be our auditor but he could have just as easily been elected to the position and we'd be faced with the same type of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we're doing what we're doing. It is the appropriate thing to do and um, this has my full support. So move approval. Second. Motion and a second. And any other comments or questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that takes us to item six, abatements recommended for approval. Um, it's one item, City of Sioux Falls, parcel ID 91419, 2019 property taxes in the amount of $2,079.34. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Kyle Sexy with the Equalization Office. Um, this uh, parcel was purchased by the City of Sioux Falls uh, back in July 20th of 2018. This should be an exempt property. Um, and for that reason, we are requesting the abatement of the $2,079.34. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes Thank unanimously. You. Thanks for coming down. Yes. Oh, roll call vote. Nope. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Smart. Aye. 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 Now motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. So that takes us to item seven, which are notices and requests. Authorize the auditor to publish notice of public auction of the Minnehaha County gravel pit on February 8th, 2021 at 11 o'clock in the courtroom of the Old Courthouse Museum. Craig, good morning. Good morning, Craig Dewey, Commission Office. As uh, you have discussed at several meetings before, the county-owned gravel pit has been declared surplus. The county does not uh, mine gravel anymore, and so uh, we have unmined gravel in <coughs> land that uh, the county has declared surplus, and the method that you selected was by public auction. Uh, that public auction is scheduled for February 8th at 11 a.m. in the Old Courthouse Museum, uh, Weeman Auction. Uh, Kevin Weeman is going to be uh, conducting the auction, and so they'll have a screen there that they'll bring. They bring an 80-inch TV with them, and they'll bring sound, and that way uh, the old courthouse museum will provide for social distancing. Uh, certainly, uh, we hope as many people show up as possible. Uh, the marketing materials that uh, uh, are being distributed to different contractors and other interested parties uh, include a borings report, 
so that uh, any potential bidder has some background. Uh, Geotech was the vendor who conducted that boring. And then we also have uh, the property uh, platted out separately, uh, as well as overhead maps. And then uh, it also is important to mention that because the property is immediately adjacent to the current law enforcement shooting range, it's very important uh, for public safety reasons that law enforcement can continue to train there with the gun range. And so uh, language has been inserted into the deed uh, for the property that would indicate that whoever buys the property would be subject to that continuing potential discomfort as shooting range operations continue. So we just want to make sure that any potential buyer is also aware of that. And uh, so anyone who would have an interest in, in different uh, gravel mining or aggregate, we would certainly welcome their participation uh, in the auction. Uh, additionally, uh, you can contact the commission office if you would like to receive additional information uh, regarding the auction or any other details. And uh, you can get uh, the full marketing package of all the materials. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions about that process? Thank you for letting me put in the plug to the public about participating. Commissioner Barth. Will people be able to bid online? Uh, right now, this is in person only. Okay. Other comments or questions? Commissioner, Commissioner Karski. This is land that's been owned by the county for close to 100 years, probably longer. Has not been, no taxes have ever been, have been paid on it in that time. Um, the sale of this land will give cash to the county for us to pay our bills. It'll put it back on the tax rolls. And um, we haven't mined or used gravel in our highway department in decades. So it, it's just land that was sitting there, and this is, this is a, a good thing, for, again, for everything all the way around. So. Yes, Commissioner Carsey, and actually to build on your comment as well, uh, for a section of uh, land that is outside of city limits but in close proximity to Sioux Falls, this land is very well positioned <coughs> compared to somewhere that could be further out in the county, and so I think that could be a benefit for any potential uh, interested party. <coughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? If not, I consider a motion. Move approval. To authorize the auditor to publish notice of auction. Second. Motion in a second. Roll call vote, please. Sanigo? Aye. Kyberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item eight, planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item nine, petition for compromise of lien. There are none. Uh, that takes us to opportunity for public comment. Is there anybody here this morning for public comment? Does not appear that there's anyone here for public comment. Oh. All right, then. Are you here for public comment? I am. Oh, okay. I guess I have some concerns that I expressed to most of you yesterday about the temporary transferring of uh, someone from the auditor's office to the treasurer's office um, in, statu in statute, statutorily speaking. The only, there are only two areas that the commission has anything to say about in elected officials' offices. One would be the budget approval, and the other would be the hours in the building. Short of that, you have nothing to say about who's, who works in the office, what, how the work is distributed, or any of that legally. So what you did earlier today is in violation of state law. Well, we've had it checked out by the state's attorney. It was approved by the newly elected treasurer doesn't take effect until the newly elected treasurer is in office. So we're confident that our, our action was legal, but we appreciate you taking the time uh, to express your opinion. Thank you. Well, theoretically, she isn't the treasurer yet, and I am. The action is taken now, not then. And whether she's the new treasurer or whether she's not, you still don't have statutory authority to do that. She does. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I'm glad you follow the laws when it's convenient. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that takes us to regular business. Item 10 is a budget hearing to consider supplemental requests to the 2020 annual budget. Kim Adamson, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Kim Adamson from the auditor's office. Um, I'm bringing before you today a list of year-end supplements being requested by various departments in the general fund, the 24-7 the fund, and the highway fund. Um, these 
budget requests were noticed two weeks ago uh, when you approved, when you gave us authorization to post notice for this budget hearing. Um, today we have total supplements for the general fund of $823,525. Those consist of uh, a request from the commission office for $41,000 for uh, multiple budget lines, part-time, group insurance, audit fees, publishing fees, and furniture and office equipment. The coroner is requesting $41,525,000 for transportation costs because of a contract that was renegotiated with MedStar. The elections uh, department is requesting $212,000 across multiple budget lines, overtime, part-time, payroll taxes, precinct officials, postage and printing, and these are the result of the higher than normal absentee voting and voter registration activity this year. Juvenile Alternatives is requesting $165,000 for uh, to, to fund the contract with Lutheran Social Services for shelter care. Um, and lastly, in the general fund, the Public Advocate's Office is requesting a supplement of $5,000 for uh, personnel services due to some internal transfers from the uh, Public, Defender, Public Defender's Office. Um, in addition to this list of uh, supplements, we have requests totaling $359,000 for COVID expenses um, in four different departments. Excuse me, who's ever on Zoom, could you please mute? We can hear a lot of paper shuffling. Thank you. Sorry, Kim. All right. Um, so the COVID expenses are from elections, $28,000, facilities, $175,000, jail, $140,000, and sheriff's office, $16,000. Um, are there any questions about those general fund items that are listed for supplement? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner no, Benigan, sorry. Uh, Kim, I don't remember the exact amount that we received. We got two different grants for the election process. Uh, do you remember what those two dollar amounts were that weren't recorded as income until after we put this together? We do um, have two other, uh, we have some grant funds. Uh, one was for $92,000 that was received about a month ago. Um, that was, uh, now I'm not remembering that it was from a, the CTL mm -hmm. group. It was a group to advance and promote election activity, and it was a private grant. Um, we also have on today's agenda, um, the next item coming up, another $98,500 for a new scanner, which is coming from the HAVA funds that the uh, Secretary of State's office holds for us. I couldn't remember what the dollar amount was from a month ago, but effectively, if we add those two grants together with what was uh, an excess in expenses for the election, we're almost it's cash over. positive. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Other questions on that? Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. It seems like uh, these uh, supplements are greater than we normally have on an annual end, are, are we able to make ends meet, so to speak? We are. Um, as Gerald mentioned, the elections department was significantly over budget this year because of the primary and general election, all the um, absentee voting and um, voter registration activity, but we were able to secure grant proceeds to cover almost 50% of those overages. Um, the other big component this year are the COVID expenses. That's almost $360,000 of this list. So really we're pretty comparable to where we are in other years. And I should mention that the COVID expenses are being claimed against our COVID uh, relief fund dollars. They will put us over the amount that was allotted to us at the beginning of the process but we are fairly confident that we will be able to collect the additional dollars from the state's um, available uh, COVID relief fund. Any other questions? Those are all good questions. 
So then in addition to the, the uh, general fund requests, we have a supplement request also for COVID expenses in the 24-7 fund, and that was for some lab costs that were not passed on to. We're tied in, we're the, tied in on the, kind of the north end there. Uh, that was a controlling element, and Travis was really nervous about adjusting the grade of the road between the bridge and this intersection. DJ, I and think this is, GJ, this you know, is Commissioner is, Bender. Can you hear me? The T intersection. Oh, and so the this approach, is you on this. Uh, could, that's high. Although the bridge is fixed to 100%, but the intersection elevation could be adjusted slightly. Shannon, a huge impact on this the is the, of, can the highway um, department please mute the themselves? And he just couldn't get it to work, and, and you know, the answer was... Should, should we just hang up? Um, Shannon. So Shannon. It's still going to go across on Zoom. Shannon? Hard of hearing. Shannon, please note you're on Zoom. He apparently cannot hear us. Can't hear us. Hmm. Was ever a question about reviewing our audio system? I think yeah. we just yes. verified yeah. it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think they've moved on, hopefully. I think he's still on there, but yeah. at least Hopefully, he's not I think DJ's calling him, so. All right. All right. So um, just to repeat, the, uh, there is an additional supplement for COVID expenses in the 24-7 fund of 24000 And lastly, we have a request for the, the highway fund for a supplement of $3,388,000, primarily for contra contracted construction costs. Um, but this is really the um, the total request. Uh, it covers a number of budget lines, some that had savings, others that have um, budget overruns, and the net impact would be the three million three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. About the highway, other than the fact that we're hearing about their bridge on the Zoom call, <laughs> Commissioner Beniga. Kim, I'm wondering if we can get a copy of the contracted construction line item, individual projects, rather than just the line item information. I would like to see which projects were over budget, which ones were under, and I couldn't find that in my list, but maybe I didn't see it. It's aggregated. The information that we provided was aggregated per project. And DJ is here. DJ may be able to help with that. Yeah, were you able to get a hold of Shannon? Yeah. Okay. She's on mute now. Sorry. Okay. DJ Booth, the highway superintendent. I heard part of your question, uh, question Commissioner Beninga. You want a project list showing the overages and unders for each project? Yeah, yeah okay. I would like to see an itemization of the projects that we contracted out and how we came up with a net dollar amount of those. Okay, we'll get you that later this morning. Thank you. Any other questions for DJ on the highway? I think as DJ acknowledged in his memo to the commission that's um, on Dropbox that uh, these overages are not something that he intends to have happen again. And we are looking at um, software solutions to make sure we're better tracking this and, um, but it won't happen again. All right, anything else? Any other questions? All right, Kim, did you have anything else for us? Um, no, I'm just asking that you authorize the attached resolution to approve these uh, supplements to the 2020 budget. Okay, thank you. So, Commissioner Beninga. Kim, I'd just like to acknowledge your extra work in the last month to be able to keep up with all the projects that are going on along with all the issues that we're dealing with. Um, I do appreciate your extra efforts. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So Olivia, this is a hearing. So if there's anybody here who would like to speak in favor of the budget supplement requests, 
This is your opportunity. Anybody here who would like to speak in opposition to the budget supplement requests? All right, hearing none, I would um, ask for a roll call vote. Do we have a motion? Oh, sorry, yeah, motion would be helpful. Thank you. M move to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All right, roll call vote, please. Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Kim. We do appreciate your extra work on yep. this. So, All right. That takes us to item 11, which is consider a motion to authorize the following um, 2020 budget supplements using grant donations and reimbursements. Um, first one would be emergency management from various department revenue ASNs to various department expenditure ASNs. So I would just like to provide, if I may, a little more background on this group of supplements. These are annual actions that are taken um, to supplement budgets for grant receipts that we receive. They come primarily to the Sheriff's Office and Emergency Management. And then we have a few additional items um, in the general fund and some pass-through grant funds. So we have representatives from Emergency Management and the Sheriff's Office to speak to their specific supplement items. Thank you. All right, so the first one is the emergency management. Hi, good morning. Uh, Jason Gearman, Minneapolis County Emergency Management. Uh, I'm here just to reconsider a motion to uh, approve, approve this. Again, this is for grants that uh, mainly emergency management and the sheriff's office deal with each year. Um, it comes out of our expenses and then as we get reimbursed through the year, um, we need to obviously bring that budget back to back to even. Questions for Jason? I'd make a motion to uh, do the emergency management uh, supplements. Motion and a second. Any other comments, questions? All right, roll call vote, please. Barr? Aye. Seneca? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, that takes us to the Sheriff's Office um, request for supplements. Joe Bosman, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Joe Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. Same thing as uh, EM Director Gearman had mentioned earlier, we also receive several grants or donations or reimbursements from uh, either federal, state, or insurance payouts from vehicle accidents that come in as revenue that we need to supplement at this time of year to offset the expenses that we have spent out throughout the year. Again, this is a, an annual action that brings our budget back up to, to neutral. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Commissioner Barth. So this has nothing to do with equitable distribution. <laughs> Not yet. That'll come back later. We still are working on the. <laughs> All right. Anything else? So we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Karski. Aye. Aye. Seneca. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Bender. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. D is various county funds to various county budgets. So this last group includes um, several general fund items, um, the receipt of HAVA grant money for the elections department, some donations for human services, um, also uh, emergency shelter grant money that came flowed through to the county from the city uh, for COVID-related response. Um, some, and some safe home donations. Lastly, we have a supplement request for um, a federal and state grant money that was used to provide expert witness services. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Seneca? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, this takes us to item 12, which is a brief on the highway facility design and cost model. Craig Dewey, good morning. Good morning, Craig Dewey, Commission Office again. We have a number of individuals filing in who are part of the design team and the construction manager at risk, as well as the highway department. There's been a lot of work that has taken place 
over the course of this year. Uh, we initially tried to start uh, the design of the highway facility back in February, and then uh, this little thing called COVID has disrupted everyone's lives uh, around uh, the country and the world here. So we had to put a little bit of a time out on that process. Uh, we really got started in earnest uh, in June uh, with those meetings uh, to prepare an RFP for architectural services. And uh, ISG and CBS Squared uh, are the architectural firms who are part of the design team. And uh, we have been working diligently with them as well as uh, Henry Carlson uh, to provide some expertise as far as construction manager at risk services. And then of course, Tegra, our owner's rep who worked with the county on the jail expansion is also assisting the county on this highway design process as well as the uh, administration and extension building process. Uh, what you have before here today and the other parties will uh, go into more detail on this, but we have an initial concept design uh, as well as uh, a cost model that has been built uh, that you will have uh, presented to you. And then you'll have a few weeks to really process and digest that information as well uh, before you are asked for formal approval to move from the pre-schematic design phase that we're currently in right now. Uh, we're looking for your authorization uh, at uh, January 19th to be able to proceed further into the design model. And uh, so uh, the next steps that uh, you will see here is uh, that uh, time to answer questions uh, after the presentation, and then uh, we'll come back to you uh, in the early spring time frame with a guaranteed maximum price for the facility. And uh, as uh, you're aware, uh, the total cost for this uh, project that's being presented is at 12 million. That includes $10.4 million in construction costs and $1.6 million in soft costs. Uh, and before I uh, turn it over to Dick Strasberg from Tegra, I just want to thank everyone on the design team, uh, the construction team, and the highway department for really being uh, thorough and deliberate in the process up to this point. And so uh, we're certainly happy to answer your questions moving forward and appreciate your uh, consideration. And again, uh, we'll be back uh, coming up soon. Uh, next up will be uh, Dick Strasberg from Tegra to talk a little bit more detail about how uh, we have proceeded in the design process. Good morning, Dick Strasburg with Tegra. So as Craig said, we went through a selection process for the architect and also the contractor. And uh, after we got them on board, the first thing we wanted to do is go look at other facilities, both on the private, ones that were built for private industry and one that were built for public sector. So our goal was to take lessons learned from both the private sector and the public sector. So we use that as a base market. If we look at buildings overall, the ones for public sector, they, they, they tend to be pricier and we want to understand you know, what, are, what are the components that we need and what are the ones that we don't need. And uh, so the architects are going to present a, a design solution that I think we, we've come up with that's, that's really a pretty, pretty good solution for, for the dollars we're going to spend. Um, so once we got to that point of touring, then we, we took a real in-depth look at the needs. Uh, now DJ and his team had, um, there's another firm that was involved to do the master plan study a couple years ago, master plan and it needs analysis. So this team basically uh, took that and, and pushed it uh, kind of to the next level. So we did a pretty in-depth look at the needs analysis. Then we had, um, we had a lot of concepts. We looked at the existing site and studied that. We looked at other sites. And, and, and I can say this was a, a very thorough process we went through on both of those because there's a lot of moving pieces on it, uh, and it was elected to stay at the existing site, and um, primarily because of the cost of replacing the salt storage, fuel island, other outdoor storage or, or cold storage, and uh, the infrastructure of the site. So then once we got, made that decision, then we went to uh, really start looking at the, at the design, and um, I think it's fair to say this, this is, we've had to squeeze very hard to figure out how do we, how do we get this within you know, a reasonable budget and still meet all the needs. And so some of the things we looked at, that, this is an example of the private and uh, the public sector uh, you know, sort of thinking coming together. It's a pre-engineered metal building, but we've got concrete at the bottom four, four to six feet up. So, because that's where we, so if you look at the buildings that were built in the 70s, where do they start really showing the wear and tear? It's at the bottom of the buildings. So we've got concrete at the bottom. So we've kind of, that's an example of taking the best practices from from both private and public sector, so right now we're at the we're really we're really at this early early design phase. This isn't what you're going to see isn't a completed design. We've spent a lot of time on the budget, so we'll first show you the building and then we'll jump into the the numbers. Good 
morning, Commissioners. Justin Steffel with ISG, um, Project Manager for ISG. Um, today with you had an intro, you had a little bit of intro from Craig on some of the team members mm -hmm. here. Um, but we want to start today with presenting the floor plan with floor plan. Um, Bob with CBS Squared and Josh Muckenhern with ISG. Um, I don't know if you guys want to actually go up to the screen if that works for you. But um, we want to kind of show you what we've been up to the last couple months with multiple design meetings uh, with the high de highway department and other folks. Another one chunk of space is going to be for an office admin, the, the things that you normally need to run the day-to-day -day office pieces of this type of operation. So they can hear you on TV. Well, I don't know about your audio. Yeah. <laughs> it should be on. We want to hear you. And can anybody hear? Is it on, Tony? We are taping it, so that's why oh, okay. we need to have the microphone. Tony, this doesn't appear that. to be on. My wife usually says I loud enough the way it is, so I can't believe that people can't hear me. Is the green light on? Is the green light on? No, the green light is not on. Sorry. Give it a second to turn on. Madam Chair, we probably, he can have his associate gesticulate at the board. Budget supplement for batteries? <laughs> <laughs> do, you do you think maybe you could come to the mic and that yeah. then he could help point out the places that we need to look at? Thank you. Thank you. Is this better? How so much? Okay. So um, to the upper part of the screen is the third component, typically. And thank you for, who, for whoever's moving that around for me. That's fantastic. Uh, there's a vehicle, a heated vehicle storage area. And, and that area is typically uh, houses the, the equipment that's needed literally on a day-to-day -day basis that has to be out on the road. It's not necessarily for seasonal storage of, of, of equipment or equipment that's used in a seasonal capacity, some in the winter, some in the, in the summer, summertime. So when you think of those three pieces, those three chunks that, of space, they all have a, a different associated cost of construction, and they all need different pieces, uh, different mechanical, electrical, and plumbing components that go along with that. So uh, whoever's running the screen, if you could maybe zoom out just a little bit, so um, this is literally the most efficient floor plan that you probably, one could probably come up with. Uh, I've been doing these types of facilities for about 31 years and, and uh, arguably they're all, they all kind of look the same and I think the commissioners who are on the tours uh, and, and again the commissioner's been phenomenally proactive uh, in terms of participating, not just, not just being, uh, uh, um, uh, kind of with a, you know, watching us in a non-participatory role. They were on the tours. They've offered design comments. They're looking at the plans. They listen to past clients, so it's, it's worked out well. Um, that said, we've designed from the inside out, and we've kept everything kind of grouped together, and this really allowed us to move to back to the existing site when we, when we were able to place this back on the, uh, or needed, 
realized that we needed to move back to the existing site and my cohorts at ISG will talk a little bit about that as well. Um, that said, there was a lot of hand wringing, hand wringing um, and I think the commissioners again can attest to that in terms of uh, squeezing everything we possibly could and, and using space as multi-purpose space wherever we could within that building footprint. And at that point, it, the, the project really took, a, the design really t hit the ground running when Henry Carlson started putting some price components together. And that's where the structural system of this, of this project really took a turn uh, because it, uh, based on what, what they were seeing for cost in their cost model, we were able to blend a design with a superstructure on the building that, that allowed uh, it to be built at a reasonable cost and then still get some of those components, as, as Mr. Strasburg said, the, the, six, the six foot high precast around the bottom. Uh, currently, I'm working with a, uh, a highway department in Minnesota. Metal building system, and it's, a, it's a, again, a county highway department where you literally, in, in some areas, you can push a golf ball through the bottom of a rotted steel frame and in some areas you can push a tennis ball through. And so that's, that building's only 40 years old. And the way to do that is to, again, invest some money in that bottom portion of the superstructure so we are able to blend that. And I think we're at, as Mr. Strasburg also said, we're at the very, very beginning of this. Well, we'll my coworker back in Chippewa Falls is gonna be taking over the screen here shortly to show you a, a, a great 3D image uh, of of a massing model of this. By no means are we far enough along to, it doesn't quite match this. The floor plan is much further along than the massing model or the 3D image. But um, I think we're at a point now where I really feel comfortable about moving forward. I know the people uh, at Henry Carlson feel much more comfortable with about the numbers and how we can blend this. Uh, and I think DJ's group are, you know, are in a situation where they feel comfortable about moving forward with a, a tweaking on the floor plan, as it, as it were, to, to make sure that what we're building actually works for them. Otherwise, you're at a point in, in your life where you have to say, what are we doing the project for? And we haven't sacrificed any of those things yet. I think we're at a, we're a there's been a lot of work put into this, into this design. I mean, this is, this is probably gonna be ranked on the top 10 of, of, of something that, that we've, uh, the amount of meetings that we've had uh, even amongst ourselves as the design team, it, it's it's really paid off. So, Josh, would you like to add anything to that before we maybe go to a 3D model? Um, you know, not not really. I think you did an awesome job explaining kind of the process and um, just the overall difference in the superstructure. I think that was a key point because um, that was really a breaking point, if you will, in the in the coming bringing the budget down and just really making the building as efficient as we possibly could. So I think that was a... That, that was one and then, and then realizing earlier, earlier on, and I think the commissioners can attest to that about, it, it was pretty self-evident that in order to cut some of the dollars that we needed to out of this project, we were gonna have to stay at the existing site or the, the county was gonna have to stay at this existing site because when you start replacing salt sheds and, and those things maybe in a different period of time than you normally would have to, given it, even if they have three years of life cycle in, you know, left in the stu structure. Uh, at that point, that really was the, that was probably the other big key. We, 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 can, we can argue about all day long about taking 400 square feet out of a room or 200 square feet out of a room, but at the end of the day, the, the site and, and the superstructure were probably the two things that really helped drive the drive this to a point where we can feel comfortable com coming today here in front of you and asking to proceed to the next step, so. I did, did have one, one last point to make, um, just for clarity. Um, as you'll see on the site plan, when we get to that, the orientation of the building, the, the offices, kind of this bottom portion is closer to the highway, more visible. So there is some thought, you know, put into the, the, um, how the building looks from that side. So that won't be a metal building necessarily. We've right now, with the budget we have, are able to get a, a nice architectural precast finish on there. So it will have a aesthetically pleasing um, 
a, a building that you know the county will be proud of, but it's still within you know a reasonable budget as well. And and also it, it should be pointed out that we've already we've already uh, thought about how to add on to this uh, building. So whatever we're doing today is 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 easily adjusted or modified in the future depending upon how you grow. So that was obviously one of the key components that we that had to be in this project. So So just for purposes of the public, um, we've got several projects, building projects going on and so we've kind of divided and conquered with respect to commissioners and Commissioner Karski and Commissioner Beniga have put in lots and lots of time <coughs> on this. Um, and for Commissioner Heiberger and myself and Commissioner Barth, this is our first time to really sure. get a chance to yeah. see the whole team together yeah. and and you know kind of hear about the final uh, presentation so we really appreciate you, appreciate you coming my my question was so what is the life of the building with the substructure that you're the superstructure you're proposing it's a great question one that comes up literally all the time so typically if you and I'll give you the bookends Okay, because at the end of the day, once ISG and CBS Squared leave this project, the burden is on you and Mark to uh, allocate funds to maintain it. And so it's, it'll last as long as you, you know, do regular maintenance on this project. So I'll, I'll just give you the bookends and then I'll give you my personal opinion where, you, where you're probably at. Typically, on a, on a metal building for a county highway maintenance facility, it's been my experience in looking at doing that this this type of building uh, and this type of building system um, because of the number of employees and the trucks and the more roads a metal building will typically last about 40 years before you really have to start investing some serious dollars in reconstruction or or heavy maintenance okay if you the other end of the bookend is it would be a precast concrete structure and at that point, you, it, the life cycle of a typical building at that, for the, again, a county highway maintenance facility will typically run you out to 80 years. And, the, and the, the cost difference, the initial cost difference between the two is about 5%, okay? Uh, and that's only on the superstructure cost, not on the entire project cost. So your, 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 your uh, buy-in cost is substantially different. And when you think about it, it makes sense because when you build a building uh, out of either superstructure, you still have concrete floors, you still have HVAC systems, you still have plumbing systems, okay? And they're all the same. In your case, if you only have a certain amount of money, and I think all of our clients only do, you're forced into this decision-making process. So to answer your question, uh, and this is then my personal professional opinion, um, I think you're going to be talking some someplace easily in the 60 to 65 to 70 year range, in part because you're spending, and we're still spending money on that concrete bottom, you know, of the building. And that's, that's really where the aggressive, the salt, you know, comes into because even when the, the floor is dry, there's always just a, a thin, it's, it's, you can't see it, it's, it's so fine but there's a certain amount of salt that moves across the floor, just, just like on a street corner when you have dust and dirt and cars pick it up and throw it in the air. So um, that's what's the aggressive part about, uh, about degrading these buildings. So that and washing, not having a dedicated vehicle wash. That, if you just wash in a, in a vehicle's parking stall, that's going to ruin a building uh, phenomenally quick. So. Thank you. Yep. If I could, just Mr. a quick Carsey, comment, yeah. was it Boyer Trucks? Is that the one that's similarly constructed, brand new, opened up in the last that is. few yep. months? It was Boyer. Yep. And it's very, they did the same thing, six foot concrete with the metal on top. So um, it, it was a great recommendation from the design team and um, Henry Carlson Construction. So uh, we're doing what we can to make it a building that lasts and, and has, um, reduced cost basically yep. um you know the other thing is everybody well not everybody knows where the highway facility is i think all the commissioners do you know we're in a kind of in an interesting area and what is it going to look like out there in 
45, 50, or 60 years, are we still going to want our highway facility in an area that, you know, in 90 years it won't make a whole lot of sense. So we're also trying to factor it in kind of as a business decision, you know, what, I don't think too many of us will be around 45 or 60 years from now, but, um, you know, we do want to make good decisions that make sense for the long term. And, you know, 100 years sounds great, but we got to really do it within our budget and be looking ahead as what will this area look like at that, at that point also. Thank you. All right. All right. We kind of hijacked uh, your presentation. We'll let you get back to it. No, Sorry. no, that's fine. Uh, we'll go to this this next slide. Uh, or, uh, yeah, right. Oh, oh, uh, there you go. Perfect. This is just a precursor to the 3D image that my coworker will bring up on the screen here in a little bit and maybe twirl you around the building. But again, in, in this image, uh, uh, this, this 3D Revit model, and again, it's just massing. This is not how the building's going to look but it's a massing model. It does give you and show you in a three-dimensional vertical view, the lower portion is the office, the second highest portion to the left is the vehicle storage, and then the higher portion to the right, uh, again, that, that is the vehicle uh, equipment maintenance area, and of course it's higher because it has a bridge crane in that, that helps facilitate repairs. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, again, you don't see the the precast concrete bottom yet or any of those details, but they'll be fleshed out here in the next round of uh, design if you give us the go-ahead to, to do that. So with that, uh, I'll probably turn it over to the ISG folks uh, to discuss the site. Thank you. Thank you. David, you want me to stay over here at all? Are you good? Stay over there. You're all doing right. great. Oh, Anna. fantastic. So um, there's going to be a su couple of side options. David Axel with ISG president. Um, so a couple of side options that we've been running through. Now, we, w we wouldn't typically go to this level on the actual site analysis because we are still in this conceptual phase. But we really wanted to flesh out what did that full stormwater layout look like? What did the utility connections look like? And I think we have a pretty good handle on that. So this is the first option. And, if, and you'll see in the next uh, a couple slides down where we're doing the master plan of the overall facilities, not just this facility. But this is really located directly to the west of the existing facility. There's an open lot there. It kind of uh, straddles in between those. Um, there's some trees there that have actually been taken down. So that's where that main facility is actually going to go. The stormwater for that is all being captured in this particular option on the north side and then would outlet to its overall natural drainage pass to the north. But there is um, the large depression. in Muck, can you kind of point to that detention area? Um, that talking. Yep, yep. So that detention basin is sized so that it would decrease um, 30 to 50 percent of the stormwater that would actually run off of this on that peak flow uh, flow rate um, to the north. Um, but that's really outlined that in this. And this is just, again, in the planning phase and not been fully fleshed out. But really wanted to get a handle on the feasibility and what we would be doing for both uh, the stormwater and the utility connections that are also priced. Do you want to go to the next one? We have option two. And just for clarity, just in case anyone yeah. was wondering, the so you can kind of see briefly, just to give you an idea, that's like the existing um, like office admin facility right now. So we're just west of that. Good call, Josh. Yep. So we did also want to look at one overall outlet, and this is option two. Um, it is significantly additional cost, but if we wanted to take all of that stormwater for the entire site, and connect that all the way back to that southeast area. And we really placed our detention basins on the northeast corner and the southeast corner of the particular lot. And then that full outlet would go to the southeast back towards the, the, um, the 60 uh, right away. Yep. So looking at this, is this most certainly feasible? There's a couple things that I do have an issue with on this particular option. Um, a, significantly more money. But B, the other issue that I do have on this particular option is the fact that by the time we get the grade to connect all the basins around, we have all of this swale that kind of um, encompasses the entire site, and it's at a, a pretty minimal grade. So I do worry at times that then when there's grass and there's debris buildup in that, that particular swale, that then you'll have slight water ponding, and we always hate that from a mosquito effect from just an overall sightliness, and you get cattails and things like that growing. But we did flush that out as option two as a feasible option 
for the overall grading plan. I think the last sheet that we're that we showed here, what we did want to uh, show you folks is the fact that most certainly we're we're not replacing the salt storage right now. We're not re replacing the unheated storage. Um, we are relocating one of the existing buildings. Um, Josh, you want to point to that relocated existing building? Yeah. Yes. So it's this this square right there. Yep, is being relocated. But we did want to show that we have master plan that we can fit all of this on and we can make sense in all of the facilities being reconstructed at some point in time on the existing site with significant room to the east actually um, of your existing site. But we wanted to show all of those and all the lines going all over the place is actually us running auto turn to ensure that that layout is, is appropriate. One a modification that we did talk about with this and, and based on some of the geotechnical port of actually moving that salt storage to a different location and, and that would probably come down just south of the unheated storage to the southeast there. So that's what I have from the site. Any questions on the particular two site options? We're still most certainly flushing those bath both out, but really think that this is an advantageous site for this particular facility. What's the relocated existing structure that you're <coughs> adding Can you show on? where the existing is? So this is, this is the, this uh, kind of white, you can see it underneath. Um, that's the existing building that would be relocated over here, and that's a, like, storage, vehicle storage. Un unheated storage. Yep, okay. yep. And uh, just to add a point of clarity to that, that's, that's just another example of one of the, um, the efficiency uh, items that we looked at. Rather than building, you know, brand new, cold storage right now for everything. We're, we're really reusing what we can on the site and then uh, having the ability to expand this building in the future when that comes. So by moving this over there, it's a very cost-effective way to maintain as much storage on the, the site as, as possible. And we're actually maintaining the existing facility for, for that storage for now as well. So we, all, we know that that'll be a future phase and the unheated storage can most certainly be a future phase at a later time. But right now we're uh, really using as much as we can on that existing site for what we have for um, uh, existing buildings to actually encompass that maintaining that we're just gonna maintain and construct right now the overall facility on that uh, west side. Commissioner Karski. <coughs> The second conceptual design, if you just go up one yeah. screen, yep. Yep. Um, you, you, you talk, and we haven't had a very detailed conversation about this other than I think Commissioner Beninga and I saying we have to take care of the drainage issues Absolutely. out there, and yep. um, we want you to show us what it is. You, you say significantly more. I mean, what what's significant? Yep. I think we... A couple yeah. So a couple hundred thousand dollars to take care of our runoff and be a good neighbor because that part on the southeast corner, a lot of that's coming from our salt storage facility. Yep. And, I get you know, what you mean. It, it's not good. Yeah, we yeah. need to be a better <laughs> yeah. neighbor out yep. there than what we have been, in my opinion. And I, I even think that that should be done regardless of whether we were doing a maintenance facility and it sh the cost of that should be looked at yep. outside of this because it, it just has to be done. And, and I know I had outlined, you know, one option that I really think when we get into the design, I think an option that really makes a lot of sense and, and doesn't create the swale that is all the way around the site is really if you look at option one and having that north drainage area that would really take care of the stormwater for the new facility, but then still constructing the basin that would be to the to the southeast mm -hmm. with some level of a you know a four bay in it so that you're getting some settlement out prior to to actually discharging i think is a real option and it's probably a more cost effective option and something that we would most certainly evaluate in that but we are decreasing the overall peak runoff on all of the options significantly just to follow in line with with that overall impact as well yep yeah. If I may, yeah. it, engineers like to use the term swale. What's the difference between a swale and a ditch? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. just nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> yep. So as you're doing the master planning, what's the plan for the existing admin building? Will that be will that be torn down once the new? Yeah. If you if you go to the overall master plan, what we had anticipated there. <clears throat> was the actual existing facility and the ex existing admin would all be removed. And really what we're looking at there is potentially that salt storage. Because if you look where the salt storage is right now, that ground falls off significantly to the north. 
So if we were to put that salt storage in that particular location, we'd have to haul in a significant amount of dirt. And what we could do avoiding that is actually move that salt storage, the new salt storage eventually, um, to that facility right where the, the, the old facility is and, and decrease our footprint and decrease the construction cost. Correct. Commissioner Heiberger. Yes. Is the cost of removing the existing building going to be in the bid or is that going to be something that comes afterwards? That would be in a that would be an additional phase. So right now the whole Josh, can you show what we're talking about for the full improvements only on this, right? For this portion of the project. Yes. yes. So it'd be the the new facility and then moving this storage building over to right here. So the existing facility and both of these would be utilized for the time being. Um, and as you can see, these kind of these colored lines that are going through through here, that was our way of making sure that all the trucks would be able to turn and, and maneuver between the existing buildings that'll be here for um, initially. So you can see they're able to still get around um, all of the existing facilities that'll be remaining. Yeah, good question though. Other questions? All right, thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. Before we turn it over to Henry Carlson for cost, um, are we able to jump to the Zoom screen sharing and jump to that 3D model? If we're, so, I want to be respectful of time. Are we? Are we okay? No, that'd be on fine. Time? Thank okay. you. And Jay, Jay, if you can hear us, um, go ahead and display your 3D model when you can. Same world you do. <laughs> we're all we're all dealing with that. Jay, Jay, if you can hear us, uh, go ahead and hit share. Okay, Jay, you're on. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. Uh, awesome. Thank you. So my coworker who took the uh, helped me develop the the floor plan and and put some lines to it. Uh, Jay, if you can, uh, uh, may, maybe we'll start, yeah, we'll start right there in the front. And again, as I mentioned, the lower, the lower level uh, roof area is that office admin, uh, one of the third, or one of the three components. And then Jay, maybe just twirl it around, go around clockwise to the, yeah, there you go. Thanks, man. And so now you're seeing what you can kind of start to from here. Perfect, Jay. Thank you. You can kind of see the profiles of the building, okay? And and obviously the a pre-engineered metal building system lends itself to a low sloped roof, uh, and you can see that we've picked essentially just to the right. Um, you can see where the high, the very high roof and the and the low roof with the office admin area that they kind of shed water to the um, right. And the large area, the heated vehicle storage, uh, sheds it to the left. And so we're splitting uh, stormwater because that's the one, one, typically the one disadvantage with going with metal building systems when the building is so large. What do you do with water, snow, and ice? Uh, because all of that is coming off of the building at one time. And of course, gutters are susceptible to being uh, ripped off and or ice dams. And then you have to do heat tape. and all of the other things that go along with this. So we think we have a solution that's gonna, that's gonna work. And then Jay, if you wouldn't mind again, continuing around and going to the, yep, there you go. Thank you. Um, so you'll see some window uh, penetrations or fenestrations on this, on this side of this facade. Those are actually uh, large uh, translucent, translucent better insulated w uh, window systems or panels than what a typical window is. And 
the commissioner saw those on, on our tours. Uh, we have them on this side in particular, but that's not to say that when, when the final product or the design is fleshed out, you'll, you'll also see that. What we're trying to do is, is garner as much natural light up near the ceilings a, as we possibly can in those areas because uh, we don't want to leave lights on. We want to get as much natural light during the course of the day inside of an area that's typically not occupied continually. That's what the goal is. Um, Jay, if you want to keep going around uh, clockwise there. So now we're coming back to what, what you'll see. This is kind of the northeast corner, if you remember on, uh, in your mind's eye about the, where, where this sits on the site plan. The far left door, I'll work from there, is the wash door coming out of the wash bay. Jay, if you wouldn't mind pointing to that just a little bit. Thank you. And then the next one over is a is 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 an exterior second exterior access to the to the um, north from one of the maintenance bays. We always like to double load our maintenance bays or at least one when we can. So in case a piece of equipment isn't finished being worked on or we, we're waiting for and another one has to get in, we can do that without clogging up the efficiency. Um, and then again the uh, the. Uh, uh, pieces here facing to the east. The other two doors to the right are are the double loaded corridors that, for the um, the heated vehicle storage and truck ac vehicle access from that side. Jay, if you wouldn't mind going around to the to the uh, yep, there you go. Uh, just for reference, the taller piece is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 32 feet, I think. By the time we take into the the account, the depth of the bridge crane, given the span for that super, that piece of the superstructure and to clear the structure of the building. The piece on the back side and the heat of vehicle storage is in that, is in that 22 foot range, uh, plus or minus. And so now here again is the south piece. The wash bay door is furthest to the uh, east. We also again like to put translucent uh, uh, door systems on the wash bay. Um, in part because we want, when the vehicles are cleaned, you want as much either natural light or artificial light as you possibly can in order to make that happen. And then the three bays, uh, overhead doors to the three bays to the left, those will be for maintenance bays. And then you're back basically far to the left again, you're back over to the office admin area. If you're wondering what that taller piece is in the very center, that's as, that's as tall. Yep, thanks, Jay. That happens to be a, a, essentially a mechanical mezzanine. And one of the things that the group has talked about from the outset, and I think the commissioner saw it really on, on almost every project, I think that there was one that had some rooftop units on it. And, and you know, we heard, you know, Mark was part of the conversation, your Mark, for facilities Mark was part of the conversation to start with. And we, we were all in concurrence that one of the things, one of the goals also was to keep as much of the mechanical systems in, inside the building envelope as we possibly can. And that, that's, that can be a challenge, but one of the things that, why that is, is because now your, your mechanical equipment, which is a huge expense in this building, they, that, that lasts longer, and in fact, it can last almost as twice, twice as long when the, when the HVAC equipment is inside of the building envelope as opposed to it, it is on the rooftop. So while we brought down the cost, we didn't sacrifice, in my, at least in my opinion, and the commissioners can maybe speak to that as well, that we didn't sacrifice any of, the, any of those uh, long-term quality things, again, that you would expect in a public in infrastructure project. Um, the, the neat thing about where it sits right now and why it's as tall as it is is because I can grab clean air, okay? So we're, we're situated in that footprint where we're not bringing in vehicle exhaust, you know, with an idling truck sitting outside. And the other thing is we're exhausting air out in the center almost like a chimney. So again, the, you know, uh, dirty air, if you will, from the inside both you know, from an occupied human standpoint or vehicle truck standpoint, it's leaving a great spot and we have access to bring clean air in. So I, it, that piece of it really worked out well in putting it up on a mezzanine, so putting it up high. So um, with that, I think, Jay, I think that's about it unless the uh, commissioners would, 
like to rotate or see some specific thing around the perimeter of it again. So, any questions? All right, thank you. That thank was you. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Morning, commissioners. Dave Deary with Henry Carlson Construction. And uh, yeah, as Gene put it, uh, uh, we've been working on the number side. So if we could get to um, the cost model summaries, and Mike, if you could introduce yourself. Um, uh, I'm Mike Carlson again with Henry Carlson Construction. Okay, if we could just blow that up just a hair. And probably just go down to the bottom. That's what everybody's concerned about. <laughs> okay, what you see here is uh, we've been working shoulder to shoulder with the design team and the ownership group and the owner's rep uh, for several months now. And uh, we built several cost models. And uh, this summary sheet actually just shows the most recent four. And um, the number that we're looking at right now is the number on the left. Uh, we're looking at a building that's about 62,144 square feet. In our opinion, uh, the cost for that facility is gonna be uh, just under $10.4 million. Uh, this is the same number that uh, Dick would have showed on the overall project budget and um, it's taken a while to get to here uh, but we've worked really well uh, with this team uh, we've had some very very good discussions and uh, arm wrestled over a lot of things uh, but um, we feel really good about this number and the scope of the project and we believe that this uh, this delivers the project that was um, meets the expectations of what the owner wanted from the beginning. Uh, just a couple things that I do want to touch base on, and uh, this is still a work in progress. And so we're going to continue to update these cost models uh, as the design progresses. I know we've had several discussions about changing the building slightly. Uh, we've got some inside outside corners that uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to eliminate. And uh, we're actually not gonna spend money doing that, but we're gonna gain some square footage in the building. So um, we're just gonna make the building a little bit more efficient. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we're comfortable that this building can be built in that $10.4 million um, construction cost range. Um, there is a lot more detail than what you see on this summary sheet, um, but uh, I think Mike has been doing, you know, Mike has been doing the heavy lifting and I think he's measured over four or 500 different building components and coming up with this model. So uh, Mike's worked his tail off to help us get to here. So I wanna make sure that he gets some of the credit. Um, any questions about cost? Questions, comments? I would say uh, Mike went through more than 500 different <laughs> items it seems like every meeting we had we had multiple discussions and frankly we were impressed with Henry Carlson's and the group's um, expertise in trying to get some of the things that we talked about over the very beginning of the process to where we're at right now uh, was phenomenal because we made some significant changes and reduced the cost by a significant dollar amount and I appreciate their professional support. Thank you. Maybe we could, uh, if we could slide the, uh, the, the screen up for the master budget. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the, the 10 for in for construction. We've got the corresponding architectural fees, uh, fee for Tegra Group, and then other soft costs. That's things that are like uh, the geotechnical work that we are doing out on site, uh, survey, uh, construction quality testing, legal fees, and so on. And then on the fixtures, furniture, and equipment, we've plugged $100,000 in for that. Uh, we basically aren't to that yet. We haven't, um, we just took out a, a per person number, got to vet through that yet. And then we're carrying a 4.5% uh, contingency on it for the owner. So one thing that we try and put in these projects is we like to put in alternates. So the goal is the way that the CMA or process works, as you know, is we take um, bids on all the, the, all the trade work. So all the subcontractors all get competitively bid. And right now we have the estimate and we'll go through once we get uh, to the guaranteed maximum price and eventually the construction documents, we'll have hard bid documents. So if we end up having a variance there, we'll have uh, you know, potentially up or down and the construction con the owner contingency helps, to, helps it, um, if it goes one direction and if it goes the other direction, we wanna have it. So we've got, if we've got extra dollars that we've got alternates already designed in. So within the architect contract and the construction contract, they both have 5% already in their fees. So they'll do design out 5% more of a building <clears throat> than what we'll actually have, you know, in the budget, in the event that we, the bids come in better than what we anticipate. Any questions on the process? I think we've made good process. It seems like it's been slow because of COVID, but I think overall we've, we've got some good momentum going now. Have you identified any of those alternates at this time? Uh, we have not. Okay. We've, had, we've had a lot of discussions on what they could be, you know, anything ranging from should we gut the existing building and maybe put in some other doors, use it for whatever the department may need to, um, you know, having other things where there's more glass in the offices or, you know, we, we really haven't got to that yet. Okay, thank you. Com Commissioner Bender, Peninka. You're Bender. <laughs> yes, I will try to remember that. <laughs> I just want to make a con comment about the bonding issue, although we don't know what the rate is at this point, but since we started this project, uh, we're in a very favorable market and we know that the uh, bond interest rate's probably going to be going down and we believe that we're going to be able to build something that's going to be very favorable for what we've retired in bond debt on the current uh, situation we're in. So we won't know, obviously, until all the pieces are put together, but I think the timing of doing this and doing it at this particular price is a win-win for the next 40, 50 years on what we need as a county highway department. Commissioner Karski. Thank you, Commissioner <coughs> Beninga. Um, and, and to all you guys, um, Building a highway facility definitely is not as sexy as building a jail, but, um, <laughs> you know, this is a project that's been talked about within the county for close to a decade of we really need to be looking at this, and um, we're finally, finally here, and, you know, we've talked about the what and the how much, but we really haven't talked about the why, and this is, we here probably understand the why, but this is for the public. Our highway department is doing their best to operate out of a facility that for the most part was built in the 1950s. And if you think back, you know, so what, but if you think back to what ag equipment looks like, and this is what, you know, we're working with is big equipment, bigger equipment to get the job done versus what was used in the 50s. What does a tractor look like in 1950 to what does a tractor look like today? And we're trying to put this equipment in there and maintain it and I would say that you know we're we're really not taking good care of the one thing that we really should be taking care of, and that's our staff. Mm -hmm. And um, having a proper facility for them to do their job safely and adequately is is really the utmost of importance. So we're working in a facility that, again, is pushing 70 years old, and it's just time. And this is, as Commissioner Benninga said. The opportunity is best. We can do this without increasing any taxes. Uh, we're retiring debt. We have the cash flow to do it, and we can do it at a very, very good interest rate. So that's the why. Why are we doing this? So thank you.
I'd say you would. You do bring up a really good point. We did put together a facilities task force that you helped chair, and I would tell you to a person, everybody on that that went and toured all of our highway facilities um, were, um, I, I'd say, appalled. Might be a fair word by this by our current facility and so I, I don't think that there's any question that we need to do this and I, I personally just really appreciate you know it's easy to do a presentation like this well not easy for me because I just sat here but <laughs> um, but it's really all the hard work that's gone into getting this you know all the really painful work of arm wrestling over um, you know what you can and can't afford and to, to bring us a project today that fits the scope and the budget um, is an accomplishment uh, to be recognized. And so I, I too, want to thank all of you for that hard work. And I think Commissioner Heiberger had something she wanted to say. I, ha I have a couple, well, I actually have a couple questions. And if they're too far in the weeds, then we won't talk about them now. But I want a, a couple of different questions I had. Are we going to use standardized, you know, we're working on standardized officing for this building. Are we going to be using that at highway also in, the, at, in their administration part? Yeah, once we get into the design phase now of really starting to look at the details, we're going to try and keep it so it's consistent with what will be happening in this building and the extension building. Okay, another question. And this may be too far in the weeds, too. Um, and I was just wondering about um, heating and cooling of the building. Obviously, you're heating and cooling the administrative part and the storage part where the trucks are. You will be heating, I would assume, but not cooling. Correct. Um, are you going to use forced air, are you going to use um, waste oil, are you going to use floor heat for a, a, a cold still, truck, full, floor heat is really good and so I'm just, I don't know if you're even that far. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at now, we'll be getting into those, that level of detail. Okay. Conceptually we know that we'll have the equipment inside yep. uh, and okay. past that we, we need to still as as work through that, we don't have rooftop units. Thanks. Yeah. Good questions. So, any other questions? Anything else you guys wanted to say? Okay, Gary, why don't you go first? I would just like Bob to circle back. Uh, you had asked a question about the life expectancy of this building, and he gave you the two big ends. Mm -hmm. And this building is actually a hybrid. And so I'd like Bob to speak to where we really think this life expectancy of this building is. Okay, thank you. Uh, just just to reiterate, I think we're in that 60 year, 65 year range, because as Dave talked about, uh, it really is a hybrid uh, system, uh, but it's gonna carry you to the next phase. Why I'm really comfortable, and I think I can speak for the ISG folks about this hybrid, and why it's gonna work for you is because it really touches on I think what the two commissioners have, have referred to or have been part of, particularly uh, Commissioner Karski talked about the business component, you know, of this. You know, government has a piece of, of has to be, uh, there's a piece of it that's like a business. I know I'm on the town board in the township I live in, so I get it. I, I sit on that side of the table every, you know, once or twice a month on, on Tuesdays. So, um, and, and yet at the same time, the, the, the constituency is asking you to build right, you know, so that you're not keep, the uh, folks don't keep coming back in front of you. So <clears throat> I do think that you're right. We've hit the sweet spot on this. So, um, but uh, yeah, 60 years, you'll, you'll get there without any problem. So. All right, thank you. So in closing here, I'd again like to acknowledge all the hard work that uh, all of our different vendors uh, in the highway department have also uh, put into this project. There's been a lot of uh, rolling up our sleeves and sharpening our pencils to get the project within scope and budget. And uh, I think, Commissioner Bender, you really hit it on the head. What we'll be looking for on January 19th is your approval if this general concept works for the scope and the budget uh, to be able to proceed and then later uh, in the early spring, uh, we should be able to come back to you with a guaranteed maximum price. And really, uh, as we look at that, that would allow us to go and bid out the project to construct. But we want to make sure that we are actually have the highway department in the new facility before snow falls in 2022. Because okay. as we know, uh, keeping highways safe when it snows, particularly on days like today, when we're getting a significant amount of snow, they need to be uh, mission ready to be able to accomplish that. So that's overall time frame of the project. 
uh, and then certainly if you have any uh, closing questions, we'd be happy to answer, but we wanted to give you a few weeks just to maybe ask additional questions if they do come to mind before we'd be asking you to actually uh, provide authorization to proceed in the design phases. All right, any final questions? Well, thank you all for coming this morning. It was great to see all your faces. I've heard many of your names, so thank you very much for your hard work. Mm -hmm. All right, so that takes us to item 13, which is to authorize the chair to sign an agreement between Minnehaha County and Lincoln County for payment of pretrial service expenses. Michelle Boyd, thank you for patiently waiting. Thank you. We never get to see you anymore. I know, I know. That might be all right, though, right? <laughs> Good morning, Michelle Boyd with the Sheriff's Office. Um, the first item I have is I would like approval um, to sign the renewal agreement with Lincoln County for our pretrial services for the year 2021 to 2022. Uh, we have been providing pretrial for Lincoln County since December of 2018. And um, currently we have uh, three full-time positions and the um, MacArthur grant pays for one of the, or excuse me, uh, the MacArthur currently pays for a half time of one of those. And so the other half time is gonna be with this grant um, between Lincoln County and Minnehaha County. So it's for 17.5 and that would be for a quarter of that half time position that's not covered by MacArthur. <laughs> a little bit confusing, but um, the Sheriff's Office, as you know, just take, took over pretrial in November. And so we will continue to work with Lincoln County on this service. Um, so are there any questions with that? It's just to sign the contract with them. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Takes us to item 14, which is also yours. Let's consider a motion to authorize the Sheriff's Office to accept the Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant for the Comprehensive Opioid Stimulant and Substance Abuse Program. A mouthful. Yes, and if you remember in May of 2020, we were in front of you to ask for authorization to apply for this grant. In October, we were awarded the grant, and so what I would like to do is to be able to accept that grant within the Sheriff's Office, much like we do with the Highway Safety Grant and the JAG Grant. Within this grant, we will be working with the State's Attorney's Office for an Adult Diversion Officer, and also with Avera for uh, peer support navigator, some case management, and then we're gonna also do some sober and safe temporary housing that we're looking to subcontract out um, for a provider to operate those services. So that's the main parts of this grant. It's a three-year grant for $900,000. And um, so if you see fit, we'll accept that grant and get started on it. Questions for Michelle? Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any other items? So Michelle, what kind of like reporting out will you be doing about, what kind of tracking are you guys gonna be doing of the services that are provided so that we can see? I mean, I don't know what you have to, if you could just remind us, what kind of reporting do you have to do back to the grant provider and what could the commission expect to see about? For the COSAP grant? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, partnered with USD and they'll be doing some of the data collection for those quarterly reports. I'll be coming in front of you. We're gonna sign some subcontracts with Avera and USD to do some of that stuff. And so um, I can certainly come in front of you regularly to report that out, send emails, um, but we, put, we, we report that to the, um, um, sorry, Spider. let me get my grants straight here. Bureau of um, Justice. Bureau of Justice grant on the COSAP, yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we had a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Heiberger? Aye. Starsky? Aye. Seneca? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, thank you. you. All right, that takes us to item 15. Consider a motion to authorize the Sheriff's Office to purchase a 2020 Dodge Ram 1500 SSV from Billion Auto in the amount of $31,481. Joe Bosman, good morning. Hello again, Commissioners. Joe Bosman, the Sheriff's Office. This morning I have a request in front of you for the Sheriff's Office to purchase a 
vehicle from Billion Auto here in Sioux Falls. It's a 2020 Dodge Ram uh, truck that is specially equipped with the uh, equipment and vehicle necessities for law enforcement purposes. One thing you, nice about this option here is that we've identified a local vendor that has it in stock and ready to roll rather than um, getting it from out of town and Billion Auto will match the state bid price. Uh, that's something that the commission I think has talked about in the past and we've recognized as well that an option to buy local it would go a long ways here. Uh, the budget authority for this would still come out of the 2020 uh, Sheriff's Office budget that we have uh, a small amount of unspent funds to cover this cost of this truck. The setup of it would be so that like in weather like today, we can still get out and respond to emergencies and uh, get to calls for service. One of the vehicles that is going to be replacing has a lot of rust on it, high miles, and the maintenance cost is continuing to increase every year. So that has led us to the need for this new uh, vehicle, and we request your authorization to purchase this vehicle. Commissioner Heiberger. So, thanks, Joe. Um, so is this outside of our regular replacement schedule that we do with the Sheriff's Office? Because we, we, um, we approve so many per year to be replaced, and so is this like pulling us out of that cycle? This is, this is in addition to that cycle. So with the vehicles that we purchased with our 2020 uh, originally budgeted funds, those that has been accomplished. This is a, an end of year identification that we, we try to squeeze every much as we can right. out of our vehicles. And this would be one that eventually we would replace in some year, but it's kind of gone downhill faster than we thought. And rather than wait to order another vehicle, which is something the manufacturers have said that they are getting really far behind with shortage of parts and inventory due to COVID that any vehicles we'd place in order, we wouldn't see for six to eight months potentially. And having this one ready to go would help alleviate that. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So that takes us to item 16, which is to consider a motion to authorize the Equalization Department to purchase a 2020 Chevy Equinox from Billion Auto in the amount of $22,239. Good morning. Yep. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kyle Sex with the Equalization Office. Um, pretty much kind of the same scenario. We had a 2003 Chevy that was pretty much on its last leg, and it would cost more to fix it than what it is worth. So uh, we're just requesting the approval to purchase a 2020 Chevy Equinox LS from Billion. Uh, they were able to match the state bid price, so we figured we'd go locally instead of out of state. Any questions? Kyle, Sorry. Commissioner Again, it, you said it was the same, but is it this is out of your 2020 budget and was this excess funding or yes. funding that was excess funding? A excess funding. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Commissioner Karski. Um, we saw the pictures of the O3. <laughs> I'm glad we're giving you a new one, not the one that um, Captain Bosman was just talking about. So I think this yes, is a, thank you. a good idea. <laughs> All right, so we had a motion and a second. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Takes us to item 17, which is to authorize the chair to sign an agreement with short Elliot Hendrickson for MC 21-01 County Highway 130 Traffic Operations Corridor Study, DJ. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothia, Highway Superintendent. Uh, the Highway Department has been working with the MPO and, and the state and SEH uh, to develop a scope for a study on County Highway 103. Uh, this is the Renner Highway. And it's from I-29 over to Highway 137, which is uh, the Crooks Road, uh, just over two miles of, of study area. And uh, next year, they will be performing a study uh, looking at the traffic, looking at future improvements, intersection uh, potential redesigns at the uh, Crooks and Highway 130 intersection, and then also looking at some proposed access management requirements uh, for future development in the, on that corridor. Uh, this corridor has seen some really significant traffic increases over the last few years, a uh, few years especially with the developments of Foundation Park and the industrial development on the northwest corner of that interstate interchange. And so uh, working with the MPO, this is going to be a grant-funded project. I think it's an 80-20. Our costs are uh, about $13,537. We had budgeted $36,000, not knowing how much this project would cost. Uh, the estimate or the 
uh, proposal from the consultant came in at $75,000. So um, if you have any questions, I can answer them at this time. Otherwise, we uh, look for your approval for this agreement. Questions? This dovetails nicely with one of our last items where we have a contract with the MPO, which just shows how that provides value to the county. Commissioner Karski. DJ, you mentioned it, but kind of how will this study relate or will it factor in the growth of the foundation park and everything that's going on there? I mean, I hate to do a study before we know what everything's going to be, so will it come together that way? That's the intent. So uh, we're doing a study looking at land use as a foundation park and other proposed development area uh, based off of master plans that planning office and in Sioux Falls and planning office in Minneapolis County have prepared. And so we know, or we expect that we know what kind of future developments, industrial developments will be occurring in that area. And, and so they'll have a fairly good handle or estimate on, on future tra traffic volumes over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Okay. And, then, and then once the results from this study are, are, are learned, uh, we would look through the budgeting process maybe over the next five years and see where we might want to do some, uh, uh, some upgrades or some improvements to this corridor. And, and I, I mentioned the 137, 130 intersection, uh, that there's some safety concerns there and some very significant traffic concerns there. And so this study should really hopefully guide us and direct us on what type of improvements should be done there. We've talked about a roundabout before. Uh, we've talked about signals before, uh, multiple lane additions for turn lanes, that type of thing. Any other questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Just a habit there, Jane. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Commissioner Barth raised his hand, which <laughs> I thought was great. Um, item 18, consider a resolution authorizing the Highway Department to apply for bridge improvement grant funds for preservation of structures 50-279 and 50-330-066. DJ. Commissioners, in 2015, the state legislature uh, started the bridge improvement grant program, and, and we've participated on different projects over the years uh, since 2015. Uh, one of the, the programs that they have are bridge preservation projects. That's different than the bridge reconstruction projects that we've participated in in the past. Um, the bridge improvement grant uh, for the uh, preservation, it looks to do really heavy maintenance type of work on bridges as opposed to replacing the bridges. Uh, we've identified two projects through our bridge inspection process and through meetings with the State Department of Transportation that would be really good candidates for the uh, for the preservation program. And on the second page there are, are the two examples for these bridges. Uh, the first one, that 50-279-140, to do a preservation project on that, the cons uh, consultant is estimating that it'd be just a, under $1.7 million. Uh, the cost to replace that structure would be over $2.9 million. So uh, the rule that the, the state and the federal government use is if you can extend the life beyond 10 years, then it would qualify for this type of a project. We think that extending um, or doing this type of work would extend the, the life of this bridge much longer than 10 years. Uh, both of these, re, uh, or the first one there, that includes a deck replacement. And so the rest of the bridge is in pretty good shape, but replacing the deck that's in really poor shape, which would ultimately lead to a reconstruction project, replacing the deck now would extend this bridge probably 30 years, uh, would be my guess. And, and so this agreement is for the preliminary design. It looks at the, uh, the scope of the project, the, identifies the actual preservation work that needs to be done, uh, and starts that design process and really finalizes the construction costs. And then we would reapply next year for the grant program to do the construction. Uh, the preliminary engineering portion of this for the two structures is about $25,000. The award process and the preservation fund is different than the reconstruction fund. It's not as objective. There's um, some subjectivity that the DOT uses to award these projects. And so we don't know until they receive all of the applications and review them if they would award any or if they would award both of these or if they would just award one of them. We did give them a priority 
Uh, the first one that's listed there is our first priority, and then the second one is a second priority. Um, we're prepared to move forward if they did award both of them uh, with the preliminary engineering in 2021, and then hopefully construction uh, for one or both of them either in 2022 or 2023 or 2024. It's a three-year uh, funding uh, opportunity that, that you have with the grant. And so um, that second bridge, the preservation cost, it doesn't include um, as much work, and it's a smaller structure. So the preservation work is $1.2 million. If we did not preserve this bridge and we had to reconstruct it in the next 10 years or so, uh, the reconstruction cost would be about $2.1 million. So um, we feel that this is a really economical way to manage our bridge system uh, with these two bridges in particular, and we look for your approval. And, and today the resolution is authorizing us to submit a grant application uh, for the preliminary design for these two structures. And then once we receive back word back from the DOT, we will uh, we'll come back to the commission for accepting those grants. Commissioner Heiberger. Thanks, TJ, um, for your comments. I'm wondering, so if this significantly is going to extend the life of these bridges, if we don't get the grants, are they on our schedule to repair these grants and save us millions of dollars? No, we will. Um, We'll continue to maintain them the best that we can right now so we don't have to replace them, and then we would apply for the preservation grant again in the future, the next year. But at some point, I mean, at some point, do you put it on the list five years down the road or something? Because if we don't ever get the preservation grant and it's going to save us millions of dollars, we should be doing it. Yes, technically we would do that, but we feel pretty strongly that we would yeah, get the preservation get grant um, within the next couple of years. Commissioner Beniga. I kind of had the same question, but I would uh, maybe ask how long does it take the state before they review the process <clears throat> to come up with the results of the scoring system and let us know what's going on? We're expecting March. Okay. We will know. Mm -hmm. We're hoping sooner than that. Uh, one thing that they did this year with, with the process, uh, there were pre-applications that were due, I think, uh, end of October, beginning of November. And so we submitted them information, and we've been working with the state on these two structures for quite a while, but uh, we submitted the, the draft applications so they could look them over and give us some guidance on how to best prepare our grant application uh, for submittal. And so they've seen them already. I think most of the counties did that, and so I think that the state has a pretty good idea, which will really minimize their review time. Uh, they, once they review them, they have to take it to uh, the State Transportation Commission for approval. And we would expect that in February or March. They have mon uh, monthly meetings. Thank you. Commissioner Karski. Just reading the description of work for structure 140, the, your number one priority. Mm -hmm. 285 foot long. It's almost as long as a football field. It's 56 years old. Mm -hmm. We're looking at expanding or extending it for probably 20 years with the amount of work on it. I mean, it, it um, seems to be a good use of money to make that happen so um, you know what what did you think it would cost to build this bridge now 2.9 million is the current estimate three million okay. Mm -hmm. okay yeah this is an excellent candidate and this is really pr bridge preservation wasn't very popular uh, in the nation 30 years ago and it's really been pushed because of public funding is is just short on transportation issues and so uh, bridge preservation is just been pushed more and more and more, and, and that's why we have grant programs like this set up. I don't know if I said the number of vehicles. I mean, this isn't a, a bridge that has 20 vehicles a day. This has oh. pushing 2,000 vehicles a day traveling over this bridge. So. Yeah, I don't know if you put the ADT in here, but you're right. It's probably more than 2,000. Under, just under it's 3, just 000. under 1,700. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. it's not going to go down. So. Any other comments or questions? Move approval. Second. A motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Karski? Aye. Farr? Aye. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. So that takes us to item 19 authorize the chair to sign a software agreement and a software license agreement with Core EMR for the Jail Electronic Medical Records Program. Warden Matson, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have a software license and a software agreement with Corey Amar that uh, we would like to take the responsibility for and have the county hold that, that license and that agreement. Um, historically, the, our medical vendors um, held that 
um, during our transition that we're doing right now, we found that it's more advantageous for the county to hold that. Um, there's data forms that are site specific in that program, and if the vendor has the license and the agreement, Core EMR um, doesn't have to leave those with the county. And if we hold the license and the agreement, then all those forms that are made up for our specific site on the program stay with us. So there's no further development if, if and when we change vendors again. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Madam Chair, I have a question not to do with this motion, though. Can we, can we wait and yeah. ask after we take action on this? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I'm, uh, Warden, I believe that the Commissioner Barth has another question for you. I just wanted to ask uh, how things are going with the COVID and stuff. You know, the ICUs are full. How's the jail doing? Oh, we're, we're, we're doing well. Uh, obviously, we had a bit of an uptick. Uh, we had an uptick with some staff. Um, that's leveled down. We're on a decline. Uh, so things are looking pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. All right. That takes us to item 20, which is to authorize the chair to sign the 2021 Sioux Falls Metropolitan Planning Organization Agreement between Minnehaha County and Southeastern Council of Governments. Craig Dewey. Good morning, Craig Dewey, Commission Office. I don't think I've ever come up at so many different points in a commission meeting before for <laughs> items. I just used to standing up here and going through the lines. So this is with the Southeastern Council of Governments, uh, known as CCOG. Uh, they have a metropolitan planning organization that involves different local governmental units really help get together and help try and plan out some transportation planning and other uh, planning and zoning efforts to make sure that there is generally some form of consistency or effort being put into designing what the local area will look like uh, moving into the future and one thing that i think our community has really benefited from over the decades is thoughtful planning uh, that has taken place in our municipalities and out in the county as well uh, so this agreement has been reviewed by our civil attorneys and this is an annual agreement uh, for participation in this and i believe we have uh, three different uh, individuals uh, from the commission who are liaisons to the uh, udc meetings that take place uh, commissioners barth Beninga and Karski have been on that uh, this year. We'll see who's on it next year, but uh, it does uh, take uh, active participation uh, throughout the year as those three commissioners are aware. Uh, generally, there were not uh, really any changes except for dates as far as the 2021 agreement compared to the 2020 agreement. I'd be happy to answer any questions though. Questions for Craig? Now I'd entertain a motion. So moved. So motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That takes us to item 21, liaison, liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports today? Madam Chair, Commissioner Barth. just a comment in a sense, uh, but in uh, East Dakota Water Development uh, District, uh, we have talked about swales as a way of reducing uh, flooding. Uh, if you have a concrete... mean ditches? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in, in, in cities, and you know, it's like save your rainwater, hold it on your own land instead of squishing it down the road quick to your neighbor's property. And uh, so as we think about our highway department uh, and uh, water running onto their neighbors, uh, uh, retaining it and having it filter through the soil is probably a great thing to think about. And... Uh, we're doing a lot of studies along those lines in the East Dakota Water Development District. All right, thank you. Any other liaison reports this morning? If not, new business, is there any new business? Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. You know, I guess we sort of missed it, but should we sing happy birthday to Cindy? <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of happy to do it, but not right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, Commissioner Bender sang happy birthday to me on my birthday. So. I did. She did. Yeah, it was not, it was not ready for prime time, but it was okay <laughs> privately. <laughs> Again next time. All right, any old business? We didn't put Commissioner Heiberger's birthday under old business. There so you go, so we've been particularly <laughs> kind to her today. 
All right. I, Decades, I, I, so it's new business. <laughs> there you go. I'd like to make a comment on, under old business, which is that uh, uh, Dean and Gerald working on this uh, highway department thing is really a great yeah. contribution. I can see it's uh, been very intensive and uh, not not easy trying to squeeze, uh, you know, 10 pounds into an eight pound bag. And I, I want to thank you guys for uh, doing that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Great. Untold number of hours of work. Yeah. People have no idea. All right. Anything else? Under old business? If not, I'd entertain a motion to recess. Motion so moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, we will reconvene. Let's try, well, about 10 after 11. Give ourselves a 10 minute break. <laughs>